Let me read to you a passage from the sixth chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, verses 1 to 6, verses 16 to 18. It's the Gospel for Ash Wednesday. St. Matthew writes, Jesus said to his disciples, Take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing, so that your alms giving may be secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on street corners so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance, so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that you may not appear to be fasting, except to your Father who is hidden. And your Father, who sees what is hidden, will repay you. That's from Matthew chapter 6, verse 1 to 6, and verse 16 to 18, for Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of the special liturgical season of Lent. Lent is the time for spiritual renewal, when we unite ourselves with Jesus as he, approached, as he approaches his death and resurrection, which is celebrated at the end of Lent during Holy Week. A time of renewal involves renewing the foundations. In Christian spirituality, there are three great supports to a life of union with God. They are prayer, self-denial, and works of mercy towards others. They are stressed in both the Old Testament and the New Testament, and here, in our Gospel passage today, from Matthew chapter 6, our Lord comments on them. We are reminded that the danger in any good deed is that we can do it for the wrong reason. For instance, a father can take great care of his son, not so much for his son's benefit as for his own. The danger with religious practices, too, is that we can do them for the wrong reasons. We can spend time in prayer in order to appear good and religious. Perhaps to ourselves, let alone in the presence of others. We can give alms in order, at least partially, to gain the admiration of others, without being fully conscious that this is our motivation. For all admire those who generously help the needy. Likewise, we can engage in self-denial for a similarly self-serving purpose. In our Lord's teaching about the religious life that is given in our passage here, he chooses to stress that in our religious life we ought indeed do these things, but for the right reason. We ought do them, that is to say, for God. So then, if we wish to make progress in our union with God, we should use the time of Lent to ask ourselves what exactly we are doing about our spiritual life and just why we are doing it anyway. The question of why we are doing what we do is particularly important. What is motivating our life, including our religious life? If we do not attend to this issue, our inherited fallen condition will incline us to do what we do for self-serving and indeed for sinful purposes. We should strive, therefore, to purify our motives and do all for the love of God. On one occasion, when our Lord, when asked, our Lord said that the first and greatest commandment 
was to love God with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind and all our strength. God's command is that we love him first and foremost in everything we do. Well, are we loving God and making him the true object of our life and of our religion in all that we do? When we think then of Lent, we ought to think of this as a time when we make an altogether special effort to see God in everything and do what he wants us to do and do it for him alone. If we emerge from Lent with a purer love of God in the midst of our ordinary life, we shall have had a very beneficial Lent indeed. And let us notice a further detail in our Lord's words of instruction today on the practice of religion. It is that we ought do all in the presence of our Father in heaven, our Father. That is precisely what our Lord himself did as the Son of the Father. Who did our Lord serve throughout his life? He served his heavenly Father. We are called to do the same in union with Jesus and by the grace of the Holy Spirit. So our Lord's words exhorting us to live our spiritual life for God and not for other reasons, not for ourselves, have an emphatic Trinitarian emphasis. Lent ought to be a time of special immersion in the life of the Holy Trinity and a renewed appreciation of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. So let us ponder our Lord's words on prayer, self-denial such as fasting and works of mercy such as almsgiving. Let us take to heart our Lord's instruction that we do these very important things, yes, but also that we do them for God and for his honour and glory and not for our own. Let us resolve to live our human and religious life in the presence of God the Father, in union with Jesus his Son, and by the grace of the Holy Spirit. Let us make the Holy Trinity the object and centre of our life.